Hi, everybody. We're the Skeleton Crew, and today we are going to be talking to you about a small-ish stegosaur from Africa uh, that in continuing our tendency of making videos about stegosaurs that are surprisingly involved because it's hard to know what we know about them, especially because sometimes people edit Wikipedia out of their ass, as we've discovered in trying to sort out what we know about Kentrosaurus. <laughs> that, don't it do is, that. The thing is, viewer... Who might be watching this for the first time? Because we always have to assume that somebody's watching these for the first time. We are real paleontologists and we're not just reading Wikipedia. It's confusing when people don't yes. cite the sources for some of the information. Right. Or they say that the source says something and then it doesn't. Or they just uh, reference uh, according to the morphology. <laughs> the bone morphology. In this case. That's the it. bone morphology. This reminds at, at me, that. I'll tell this story very briefly in less than Please. a minute. When I was almost three, um, my parents took me to the National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. It was the first time I was ever on vacation. I may have been older than three. I may have been almost four. I was very young. Um, this is pre-renovation, obviously. This would have been in the, in the late 90s. And we were in the hall of, I think it was the Hall of Extinct Monsters at one point. I don't know if that's what it was called at the time, but we were in the fossil hall. And my dad, apparently, according to the story in my family, pointed at the skeleton of the Smithsonian Allosaurus, the new uh, neotype of Allosaurus. And he said, look, James, it's a T-Rex. And I said, no, it's not. And he was like, how do you know that? And I just looked at him and shrugged and said, the bones, and like toddled <laughs> off. <laughs> Which is, that's my dark, gritty origin story. Just the bones. Duh, it, it really is. Yeah. James grew up being that dude of you can tell that it's an aspen because of the way it is right just being like hmm, the bones the bones yeah the bones yeah. the bones are wrong anyway uh that's that's what i thought of hearing because of the morphology <laughs> the morphology <laughs> anyway uh, yeah, we're talking will. about kentrosaurus today <laughs> Consider the nozzle the do not look away from the nozzle <sighs> <clears throat> View, dear right. viewer, you have no Good idea start. why it took us an hour to start recording this video, and only about 20 minutes of that was trying to learn about Kentrosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we get into Kentrosaurus, um, a couple of things. One, as Scott mentioned, we are all real paleontologists. Um, this real paleontologist is Dr. James Napoli. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences and North Carolina State University. My name is Amelia Zutlo. I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History. My name is Scott Johnston. I am the vertebrate paleontology fossil preparator and technician at Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology. I'm Alex Rubenstahl, a PhD candidate at Yale University. And I'm Dalton Meyer. I'm a PhD candidate at Yale University. And together, we're, we're the, the Skeleton, Skeleton Crew! crew. Amelia, Amelia didn't, didn't say anything. Say anything. No, because I was muted oh. because I was going to type something mean, and then I decided not to, and then it was time to. Good. Speak. And then it was too late. So yeah, we're yeah. we are the skeleton crew, um, and as the skeleton crew, we have a couple of things we should say to you, which is that if you're a new viewer, thank you for finding our channel. Congratulations, we've got a lot of content for you to go back through and explore. And if you like this video and want to see more of them, you should subscribe to the skeleton crew. Consider leaving a comment on the video, leave a like. Um, and if you can, and you really like the stuff we make, consider supporting us on Patreon and buying Skeleton Crew merch from Redbubble. The links are in our description. Um, all of the support that we get goes a long way to helping us justify taking the time we need to take to make these videos. We are not professional content creators and don't think we ever will be. This, you know, We do this because we want to communicate more science, but the support is definitely really helpful in allowing us to do that and take the time out of our schedules to do it. So we appreciate the support we get. We're going to thank all of our patrons at the end of this video. Um, and if you subscribe to our Patreon, remember, you get to join the Skeleton Crew Discord server, which is a wonderful, wonderful, thriving community. We're really it's hip and a blast. We have it, it so is much hip fun and happening. There. It is so hip and happening that at, even though I'm a moderator, I have not looked at all of the threads recently because it is moving too fast for me to keep tabs on. And I'm sure that's that why there's five of us, James. Distribution yeah. of labor. I'm exclusively active in the television and movies chats. Yeah, we know. <laughs> That's Alex's domain. 
if you, if you want to pay if you want to pay us money to get bullied by alex for your movie opinions <laughs> so shall we unleash the the kentro <laughs> let's let's unleash some kentros let them out let's get spiky in here and we're starting with the base model prickle them boys hey this is another this is another operation genesis uh classic yeah God, that's I true. Hate the sounds they make. I like them. They're pretty. It's, it sounds like it's like mid being killed. <laughs> they sound like a dude pretending to be a, a dinosaur. It sounds like you know that that clip of the uh, grizzly bear killing like a, a female elk in a person's backyard. Oh yeah, and the elk is just screaming. I think it's that audio clip, but like pitched down. So. It sounds this? like something a bully would do to make fun of how a Kentrosaurus sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a dumb question. <laughs> yeah. Is What's this a dumb question? So like it was in Operation Genesis. Uh-huh. It was the other Stegosaur. Has this ever been like the canon? Like it feels <laughs> weird. That it was in it is now. Been. It is now. Is it everyone's favorite TV show? Is it really? It- it's oh, yeah, that's, why yeah. that's why there's two models. I don't. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, Dalton, do you want to do you want to enlighten Alex here and show him one of the other ones? Yeah, we can we can go and release the other model set too. Um. Neil. Neil. But like, as far as I know, I don't think it was like mentioned in. It might have been mentioned in some of the books or something. Amelia read the books most recently. Amelia, any reference to Kentrosaurus? Not that I've. Not so this I is the remember. show version. This sound is worse. <laughs> yeah, this I'm is not the show sure version. if this is better. Oh wow, the plates are kind of broad in the back. I don't like despise it. I guess it's too big. Way too it's, big. It's it's like is stego it? sized. I, let's not. I'm just gonna. We're gonna do the phylogenum right now. Oh, we oh we're starting off with phylogenum. The, we haven't even done what the name means. If someone Have wants to do that what first, its name is. We've well, seen Kentrosaurus. Okay, we have. Now, before we get into the phylogenum, why doesn't someone tell us what the name Kentrosaurus means? Sure. Um, first, though, I'm going to tell you what I misread the name was, uh, which was Pickle Lizard. Um, that is not <laughs> what it means. I don't know what... Actually, well, now, now I want to know what it would be if it was Pickle Lizard. <laughs> if you make a Pickle Kentrosaurus joke in the comments, I will call the FBI on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway it's not it's not even though this one's very pickle colored um it is prickle lizard apparently uh which makes sense because he's spiky yes well i'm sorry the species name amelia i see it i do not know how to say it and i don't know what it atheopicus atheos is it is it it's from Ethi- okay, from okay, ethiopia okay. Or, okay 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 yeah that makes sense Right. Well, it, it makes a lot of sense because it's from Tanzania. Oh, no, that's you know what? Now that you said that, that's because that's you know what? That was my gut reaction was, oh, that sounds kind of like Ethiopia. I know it's African. And then right next to that, I saw Tanzania. I'm like, OK, never mind. That can't be it. I must not understand Latin anymore. Not that I ever did. But were the borders okay. different when I, it was discovered? It was okay. found in uh, Germany, East Africa, which did not include what's now Ethiopia. Hmm. Well, OK, maybe this is. Maybe this is tea leaves here and far from me to accuse anybody who's dead and can't defend themselves of being bad and mean. Could this possibly be that they just named it after Ethiopia because it's from Africa and they're just like, that's a place there. I, I think it might be also more broadly that Ethiopia is like, it's one of these cases kind of like, I don't know, like China or like Egypt, where it's like a long-standing historical entity that's had shifting boundaries over time. They're not particularly close to each other, and so I don't know if this is ignorance or if like they were using Ethiopia as a like broader general sense for East Africa. Um, did we discuss? I, I assume we were just talking about etymology. Mm-hmm. Yep. It sounds like. Did we discuss the the renaming of Kentrosaurus several times? We were that about was to. Okay. Uh, y- yeah. So I was gonna I was gonna bring that up. By all means, sorry. No, that's okay. So, Kentrosaurus and Centrosaurus come from the same root word in Greek, which is kentron, which, as Amelia said, means prickle or sharp point. It's usually rendered with a K when we're talking about the Greek word. I do Um, find it kind of funny that 
even though it is the same word, just spelled differently for both of these dinosaurs, on every piece of, like, dino fun fact, like, trivia stuff I've seen, they're translated differently. They are. So these are the same root word, right? And because of that, you might actually, you would be correct if you surmise that the Ceratopsian centrosaurus should properly, if we're doing Greek pronunciations, be pronounced Kentrosaurus, which would mean that Kentrosaurus and Kentrosaurus would be pronounced the same way. Um, I believe, I don't know if at the time this was an official provision or if it was just widespread understanding, but there was a point in which it was considered that names were synonymous if or that like one would be not available, that a name would not be available if it would be pronounced the same as a name that already existed. Hmm. Mm. And so there was a, I believe the movement was to rename the Stegosaur, which was named after Kentrosaurus, or I'm sorry, named after Centrosaurus, um, to you Kentrosaurus, to just, you know, do the, the minor modification of the name to preserve it uh, kind of thing, which has happened a number of times. Well, um, there were some different uh, recommendations. It wasn't just you, Kentrosaurus. There was a, 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 a putting of like Ken, uh, Kentrorusaurus, which would be cool. which would translate out to like like spiked tail lizard. Kind of like that one. Hmm. I mean, that Kentru- is Kentrurosaurus. Kentru- Sorry, it's Kentrurosaurus is what it would be, which would be pointed tail lizard. Right. Interesting. Uh, so I and didn't then, actually know about some of these names, but continue, please. Paleontologist Baron Friend Snopska also gave it um, a different, also incredibly cool name um, of Doryphorosaurus, which would translate to the lance bearing lizard, which is, again, really rad. Um. Yeah, and then, James, I think you can take it over because I think it becomes the same story you were starting again. So this is what Scott set me up for. Um, Homonymy is a principle in biological nomenclature that says that names can't be the same as each other. So they can't sound the same. It doesn't say that they can't sound the same. Right, like, yeah, no, I mean, there is like a principle, like it can't be the same name as we know. But they can sound the same when spoken. Right. Um, which is a rule that I remember uh, double checking recently uh, in service of a good friend of ours on the skeleton crew here, Amelia Sipo, I <laughs> while her trying to remind, I thinking, reassure her that they could still use your encounter for the most. <laughs> because, right, because it's not a homophone. That's what yeah, I was right. thinking. Yes, yeah, so they can be homophones. Homonym is just like the same. Yeah, right. Yes. I thought a homonym was a type of ape that was closer related to. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Jokes over there. All I was going to say is that I remember the day. So Amelia had, you know, told me what the name of Jormungandr was going to be. And I was like, that's incredibly lit. That's really exciting. And then was it, who, did you find the, yeah. what is it? It was at Microsoft? Paleo Fest. It was oh, at Paleo yeah. Fest. That author was presenting just kind of a, uh, an overview of Microsoft and the work that he was doing, I think specifically in Maison Creek, because that's the Burpee Museum is in, in Illinois. Um, near the Maison Creek. Um, so I apparently had, had completely missed this publication as someone who doesn't pay much attention to publications outside my zone of, of interest, um, which, you know, is fine. Um, but it turns out, you know, yeah, it was, it was the same name, except they had an E after the O, and that was to represent the umlauts, um, which is not actually technically the right way to spell the real word anyway. I don't think the real word actually has an actual like English translation. It's kind of a bizarre um, situation, but that's um, the case for a lot of like old Norse things. Like we have names that we think that they're called, but it really depends um, on your source and, and all of that. Uh, but anywho, yeah, so we had a little bit of a freak out there for a little bit because we were going to spell it with the E um, as well, which in hindsight, I'm glad we didn't because again, the word doesn't have umlauts anyway. Um, which you can see, I don't know what the I don't want to know what the name of that character is. We do have it in the text. It's got like a little doohickey. Is that like the O that kind of crosses itself over no, at the top? No, I don't think so. Uh, the umlauts are the are the two dots, right? Umlauts are two it's dots. A, yeah. It is. Yeah. It has a do. It has a little curly Q under the O. Oh. Gotcha. 
Yeah. Mm. Um, so, and there's no way to like, why is this? Sorry, there's like gritty cat prints on that one. I wonder where that came from. Um, anyway, is it your cat? Maybe. No, no, no. It's Maybe. gritty. The mascot for the Philadelphia team. <laughs> um, but anywho, so we had a little bit of a freak out and we had to not really a freak out, but it was like, shit, this name is so good. Um, but we, so we had to dig into the ICZN and then I remember checking with James. It was only, it was like the last round of revisions. Basically. I was like, we need to make sure that this thing is kosher so yeah. that when we publish it, we don't run into, um, a shitty, sh- sh- the shitty well, situation. Wait a minute. No, I, I, I thought it was earlier. I thought it was while I was at AMH because I thought we were in the I, office it together. It came up twice. It, like it came up oh, twice. I know oh, I told okay, you, I told you initially. Right. And, and, then, I, and then again, like as publication was getting closer, like we right. wanted to actually buckle down and make absolutely sure um, that we weren't going to be screwed. Um, yeah. And so basically, you know, what we what we learned is like, it doesn't matter if it's pronounced the same as long as it's spelled different. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which, cool. which is explicitly stated. And the reason yeah. that I bring this up here is a because it's a good excuse to talk about Yorgi, but B, yeah. because um, I specifically was thinking of the Kentrosaurus Centrosaurus thing when we talked about so like we typically pronounce them differently because a c before a vowel or before any like in english we often pronounce it as a soft c right like center and things like that like that's how we are inclined to pronounce it but even if they were pronounced as kentrosaurus both times it wouldn't matter like you could name a dinosaur tyrannosaurus with an a instead of an o and that would be allowable I think it would be unnecessarily confusing. And if you do that for another Tyrannosaur, that would be a really bad idea just because it would make it so much less clear what you were talking about. But yeah. like mm-hmm. you can do it. Um, it's just that everybody will laugh at you if you do. Yeah. So, so don't. Yeah. And on the, the note, of, on the note of like confusion with Yorgi, it's like, I cannot envision a situation in which those two animals are going to be referenced in the same paper, like ever, unless you're doing a review of reptiles. So, you know, we're not, we don't have to deal with that as a problem. Review of reptiles named after n- Norse creatures. Well, right, right. Re- review of reptiles. And then also, even then, they're going to be separated by a thousand pages because they have nothing to do with each other <laughs> in any way. Yeah. Do we even yeah. know the microsaurs are reptiles? Like, I don't even know what's going on with those stupid things. They're maybe reptilomorphs, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So, so anywho. Yeah. They are interesting animals, I, I assume. I know very little about them. They're cool um, they're pretty cool. Like, yeah, one day I'll, I'll yeah. reconcile this. I should know more about them. I just currently do not. I don't know. I like, I like knowing about these early guys. I, it's always something I was interested in and in another life I might have wanted to research. So it's like, I'm just kind of interested to know what we know about the origin of reptiles, but... Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't had time to really dedicate a lot of brain water to them. Oh. Didn't like that. I don't like this one in particular because it looks diseased. <laughs> like this one. What else is there to say about Kentrosaurus, everyone? So I, I will say on Amelia's point there about the colors. It is hard to find a Kentrosaurus color pattern in this game that I think looks good. Yeah. A lot of them are some degree of either boring gray or vomit slash baby green that like are particularly unpleasant. He's looking over like he was offended. Uh, See, the the problem that I have with these is that I really liked Kentrosaurus in Zoo Tycoon and the original Zoo Tycoon Kentrosaurus was really cool because mm. it was blue with yeah. like the rusty red modeling and even the Zoo Tycoon 2 one is kind of pretty like it's got a bunch of spots and stuff yeah uh, but no the, 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 the OG Zoo Tycoon one like I loved having that yeah. guy in my zoo that, they were just really pretty that was pretty. a great model yeah and I got to use the, the conifer flooring which was pretty in my opinion yeah Mm-hmm. So I also I, I'm I'm sad that none of the skins change anything significant about the plates mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. spikes. Like it, it, it seems like such a boring missed opportunity. 
Does yeah. the TV show one do it? Because I thought those Yeah, looked, let's take a look at the other one. Yeah. Those looked brighter um, from what I saw earlier. I think they're striped. Yeah, I like them. I like I aesthetically like the model of the TV show one a whole lot better. Like, I think it's it's nicer to look at while it's running yeah. and screaming. Like really different weird not there. doing that. Um, they're all in the water. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> They know they're deposited in coastal See, environments. The colors are better. Because <laughs> it's like, even though it's kind of dull and boring, it's pretty. Like, it's a nice palette, you know? It, it does look a whole lot more cartoony, especially those front legs. Yeah, but I, you know, I have one thing that I will give it that I like more than the other one. I'll yeah, spoiler alert, I generally like the, the base game model better than this one. Yeah, me too. Um, mm-hmm. But... I like what this one does with the plates more than the other one. Um, yeah, because the other one is very. I was I was comparing it to the mount at uh, the museum in Berlin, and it's like the the base game one. The plates are just lifted directly from that, which is is great to be faithful to a specimen, and I like that a lot. But like, the plates would have been covered in keratin to some extent, and so like following the bones exactly as they are is a. Uh, is, is, is an interpretation, but it's not one that I love compared to this one, which adds a little bit to it. And like, it doesn't go crazy with it, um, but oh. it does e- extend them a bit. And I like it. I have a cursed question. This might be cursed knowledge. Yeah. It looks like this one has a beak. Can, can we confirm that? That you know, doesn't look like a beak to me. You have asked me to engage. Pervert cam. Go, go gadget pervert cam. It's been a while, actually, so... That's a beak. That's a definitely beak, yeah. a beak. Oh, look, there's a very distinct texture difference. That's 100% Fair. a beak. Fair enough. Well, we now, that's now, nice. no, but my cursed question is I'm not sure if the base game one does. Well, let's go find out. It doesn't look like there's chompers, which is sad. No, but I'm, I'm surprised often. When, oh, no, it doesn't. <gasps> Oh, ah, that's really gross. It looks like it's got the Simpsons like Babe Simpson face. It's got a Simpson mouth. Oh. It's it's got yeah, the the it's Disney's it's the Disney's dinosaur two thousand lips. Oh, I didn't <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, it looks like they almost tried to give it a color difference well, there. No, oh no, yes, oh thank God. It's they it still look like it doesn't lips. make it look good. It looks like it's wearing lipstick. Yeah, yeah. They, it, yeah, they still look like lips, but there is a texture difference. Well, check another one, because that... There's oh, a texture difference, but it's that not... That is so bad. It doesn't do a good job of uh, evoking. No. It looks like a child painted it. It's like It looks like when I used to draw dinosaurs, and I'd be like, time to give it a beak. This is the first time like we've seen something like that in this game. Like, yeah. You know, that is just so bad. Honestly, the texturing on the face in general is really rough. Like, look at that weird difference in yeah, the scale. Like the scales and then this, like, smooth. This is like, really odd. Was this a DLC animal? No, 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 no. no. This was base game oh. in both games. Okay, well, I mean, maybe that doesn't surprise me as much because the DLC animals have generally been astoundingly good in artistry. Mm-hmm. Generally. I mean, generally, generally yeah. Yeah, yeah that that is like... Some- that's weird. I don't love that. But like even the, even the base game ones of some of these models are just absolutely fantastic. That's like, cool. I can't wait till we get to the Edmontosaurus episode. Um, yeah. Although having Julius Chutney draw the the reference for that is cheating. A little yeah, bit. it is. Like, it's going to be a beautiful model. But no, I, I mean, I, I see your point. Like, this is quite rough looking for this game. Yeah, like, this, one, this I think, is looks nicer. It is less accurate, though. It's, it's got, way like, less accurate. Doe eyes. It, it really like does. Cartoon eyes, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's and this one even looks, mom. This one looks even more like it has lipstick on. It looks that one in particular is giving me the dragon from Shrek. Yes. Like, Ooh, oh, yes. No. yes. 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 Hang on. A, I think there's an orangish one. An orange. That, it, it, it wants one? to give kiss. Um, um. Can we can we mod the game to change the goats into donkeys? No. Oh Jesus! This oh is, my God! Yeah, that yeah. is that's that's uncanny. Sorry. Well, isn't no, it? Um, DreamWorks and Universal are no longer partners because they Universal has Illumination. But 
I think at one point, like Shrek has been featured at Universal Studios. Yeah. Coincidence? <laughs> boom, boom. I think not. God, that's so, rough. This might actually be a fun way for us to transition to an interesting point, which is this is one of the this is another dinosaur where sexual dimorphism has been proposed. This is true. And you can t- oh, and yeah. you can You're tell that this what that this Kentrosaurus is a girl Kentrosaurus because it's wearing lipstick, just like how all the cartoons do with cartoon animals. <laughs> Uh, Amelia, Amelia, what? what I was going to make a stupid joke about like you're telling me only a few dinosaurs had sexual differences. Like were the rest <laughs> yes. just as- asexual, completely budding? That's why they went extinct. Yeah. Y- yes. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Although um, the sexual differences between uh, the, the sexual dimorphism proposed for um, Kentrosaurus is relatively underwhelming. It's nothing that you would necessarily think of for sexual dimorphism it isn't anything flashy like hey we found some individuals that have like like uh much proportionally smaller plates and some that are much proportionally larger or anything like that it's the there's a, a paper from uh holly barden and uh susanna maidman that discusses um differences in the f- uh femoral structure of uh well femurs that have been attributed to kentrosaurus and showing that there seem to be two morphotypes Mm. Mm -hmm. which i guess more lends evidence towards that there was a gracile and a robust morph of kentrosaurus rather than anything that's fun and flashy the gracile and robust morph really (laughs) pulls me right back to the tyrannosaur species debacle of 2022 so I, this one's Kentrosaurus Regina. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah, having looked at this, I looked. I was looking at the the sexual dimorphism paper earlier, um, just because I I do tend to treat such claims with pretty heavy skepticism. And in this case, I'm I'm decently convinced that that there probably is something going on here, um, because this is they they make a point to say like their sample doesn't all come from one discrete bone bed but they are from like the upper portions of the tendaguru. Um, it's like the middle and upper dinosaur layers. So it's not a, mm-hmm. like a fully, fully contemporaneous one. So there is certainly the possibility of some uh, differences in time going on. Like maybe the, the upper ones are a different shape than the lower ones, but they, they, they note that like no one's ever suggested that the Kentrosaurs from the different parts of the tendaguru are different species. Like they are mm-hmm. very, very, very similar. Um, and something that I think is interesting is that they only note the differences. They, they divide them into what they're calling group P and group Q uh, morphotypes. They only can... Why? Like, I don't know. They okay. Can, they can only separate those two out in the presumably adult sample. This is based off of body size, but I mean, it is, it's not the best indicator of age, but it is certainly an indicator of age because things do grow. Um, generally that the smaller like they they don't notice a separate a separable difference in the morphology of the smaller femurs and it seems that as they grow they grow into one of two Hmm. morphotypes so interesting that is interesting (laughs) so there's a couple of methodological things that i think probably mean i don't want to say it's wrong because i like looking qualitatively at the fossil images they provide like it's pretty clear that some of these are much more robust than others. Yeah. And variation in skeletal robusticity is like exactly what you'd expect for a sexually dimorphic difference. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, when we talk about sexual dimorphism, everybody always wants to make it like antlers or horns or, or big display features or like the gara that gharials have that big nose swelling that only the males have. That's what sexual dimorphism. Yeah. It's called the gara. Yeah. Um, People want that to be what sexual dimorphism is. Usually sexual dimorphism is one sex is larger and more robust. Um, And I think it's worth repeating. There are not really known vertebrates where the sexes are the same size, like mean same size. Sometimes the difference is small. Sometimes the difference is very pronounced. Usually males are the ones that are larger and more robust. Um, Females are larger and more robust in to my knowledge, mostly some species of birds and snakes. 
Um, I like, you know, it's often trotted as this. What? No, what? I, 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 I mean. All right. Back to reality here for a moment. <laughs> we Dear were viewer, you will never guess reality. what was cut. <laughs> you will never guess. <laughs> and if you subscribe to our Patreon, maybe we'll tell you in the Discord server. No. <laughs> No, no we, 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 we can't. can't. <laughs> oh, there goes gravity. All right, there are miners so, in our Discord. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. And we can't um, show them our precious ore. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gone. I'm I'm so so sorry. Sorry. I know. I'm so sorry right now. <laughs> okay, there is right. a miner in our Discord, though. Yeah, there is. We have we have many miners, and we have one miner. <laughs> um, okay. Everybody's so creative. So, 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 I, editor, please mute everybody laughing here. So, I'm not laughing. What what happens in most animals is that it seems to be just different ways that different like sex hormones wind up influencing development. Right. So you get one sex that's more robust. So this is what you'd expect. I have a couple of questions um, or not questions, but just methodological notes that I think um, are worth addressing in a follow up to this. One of them is that this is all 2D morphometrics that mm -hmm. was done with um, a lot of semi landmarks and type two landmarks. We haven't really talked about geometric morphometrics a lot on this channel. Um, it's something I've used a lot in my research. Um, it's become a really, really popular technique, and it's very powerful, but it does have some limitations. And one of them is that the best landmarks are placed in unambiguously homologous areas. So, like, if you get the intersection of the... So in crocodilians, right, you've got an intersection of the prefrontal, the nasal, and the frontal, right? These are three bones. That point is a really good landmark. There are a lot of defined landmarks like that, that all have names like Nasion and Rhineon and all of these things in the human skull. Um, a lot of these are homologous throughout many mammals. Those landmarks are, real, are considered very robust because they are unambiguously homologous. The landmarks Which used here... Uh, oh, sorry. Unambiguously homologous means we know they're the same thing developmentally. Right? That's the same point. Like sure. where you are joining the nasal and the prefrontal and the frontal... That's the same thing. Developmentally, that's the same intersection of tissues, mm -hmm. of, of precursors to the bones. It, it, it's, it's a very reliable thing, right? It's a way to know that you're measuring the same thing in every animal, even if the skulls right. are completely different shapes, because you're still measuring the same point at which those bones converge. Right, exactly. There are multiple different types. Those are what we refer to as type 1 landmarks, and those are the best. There are also type two landmarks, which are generally like extremity of things. So you don't like, you might say like highest point on the femur, which is the same like qualifier, right? And that's what they state their landmarks to be here, you, right? It's the same kind of qualifier. It's saying it's the most dorsal point on the femur. Do we really know that the same developmental like cell population has formed the highest point on the femur in every individual? Not really. It's not as confidently knowable for morphology alone. Um, you can also get like type three landmarks that have no external specifier at all. Like you just like just like the middle of the bone here or something where you're like, but that's, I mean, it's, right. it's much weaker. So what they did for this is in, it, they took photos of the bones in two views and then assigned these type two landmarks around the perimeter and then have semi landmarks between them. And semi landmarks are these they're not defined in terms of reference to the bone. They are sampled with some strategy between landmarks. So you may define a curve that goes between like a good landmark here and a good landmark here. And you may say, take 10 points along a transect between them. This is just, I, I find it a little bit, it's not weak, but it's a little bit less certain than, than I would go for just because like, the, the identification of the landmarks introduces some error into the pop, into the stuff here. In addition, the statistical method that was used to determine the clusters, um, and this is something they state explicitly, is k-means clustering. And we talked about this in our first ever lost episode of the Skeleton Group when I tried to talk about the T-Rex species rebuttal paper. 
um, that nobody I ever speak to knows I'm co-lead author on, which is very fun for me whenever I do a collections visit and everybody's like, what do you think of the whole T-Rex's three species thing? And I'm like, I don't know. I could prefer you to my paper on it that I wrote a lot of. Um, <laughs> no, it was fun. Dr. Carr, wasn't it? Well, I mean, uh, and yeah, Thomas Carr, it's the like his name is first. I was co-lead. It's not terribly surprising, but I'm always like, wow, co-lead author really doesn't mean shit. <laughs> nope. Um, anyway, K-Means clustering does need the researcher, or it requires that the researcher provides a number of clusters in advance, right? What you do with K-Means clustering is you say, we have reason to believe there are two clusters or three clusters. Classify these points into those clusters. It's not the best way to do um, like discovery of the number of clusters. This is the main thing that I feel was wrong with the T-Rex's multiple species thing. Because they used K-means clustering to say, look, we found multiple clusters. It must be multiple species. The analysis has to classify the data points into that number of clusters. So it's not really a test of the hypothesis. So... You know, here they said we're, you know, we, we see structure that looks like two clusters. So, like, what are the boundaries of those clusters if we do k-means um, clustering? That's not a wrong usage of the technique. What I would like to see in a follow-up is, like, use of different numbers of clusters to determine what the statistically best supported situation is and see if the data are really pulling apart that strongly into multiple clusters. So, anyway, that is not to say that the determination of sexual dimorphism is wrong, so to speak. Um, because I don't think it is. I would like to see the same data set reanalyzed with some other techniques as well, just to validate how robust it is. You know, if you apply multiple analytical parameters and tests with different assumptions inherent to them, you can get a more complete exploration of the problem. And so I think it would be an interesting way to confirm that the signal that's seen here is really sexual dimorphism. But I, based on the evidence presented and in my admittedly cursory read of the paper, um, I think it it probably holds up and it's what you'd expect. These are, okay. these are my very, those are my math thoughts. I'll stop now. No, no. Thank you for sharing them. No. It's okay. I just watched everyone's soul die a little bit. As soon as I said, K-means clustering. <laughs> I've, I've never heard of Cayman clusters. So, Hey, yeah. is that my, that's my guy, Scott making a joke. We love it. You think math is a joke? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I know you do, Alex. <laughs> only when it involves, you make only me do it all for you. <laughs> only when it involves South American crocodilians. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's talk about these models a little bit, and um, in in particular, like let's what do they do the right? Fight. What do they do wrong? Safety. Um, as Dalton has previously alluded, the base game one is. <laughs> Very skeletally accurate to Kentrosaurus. That is more or less kind of what it looked like, and especially based on the mountain Berlin. But like, yeah, it's go back like it, it would almost certainly have different like keratin on the different. Uh, uh, it would have like more extensive keratin on the plates and on the spikes and everything. And um as was previously pointed out in our, I guess not our last one, in our in one of our early episodes on Hoyangosaurus, Kentrosaurus is actually one of the few Stegosaurus that act, that does seem to have some sort of uh, shoulder spike or periscapular spike, as they are called. It seems to be a... Oh, I'm going to make a pun. It's a weirdly prickly issue. Um, hey. Hey, I did the thing. Um, in that, it seems like a lot of the stegosaurs that are said to have shoulder spikes might not. And there are some shoulder spikes that have been found in isolation in places like the Shashimal um, formation that aren't associated with any particular... Um, species per se at least as far as i'm aware um but at least according to another maidment paper uh from the matrix that james delved into last time we did this um 
there are only three species of uh, stegosaur that actually are confirmed to have some sort of shoulder spike, and that would be uh, Gigant Spinosaurus, hence the name of the Gigant Spine, um, Kentrosaurus, and Lorincatosaurus. Uh, oh, sorry, Loric- Loricatosaurus. Jesus, it's a it's a weird name to say. And also, I will say that um, Loricatosaurus seems to have a like very solid evidence of having a shoulder spike, and it looks re- like this is a just so thing. But wow, it looks almost identical to Kentrosaurus. They are incredibly similar looking animals. Hmm. 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 I do wonder how much of Loricatosaurus is done. Let me see. Wait, wait, wait! I might have, I might have said a wrong thing. I might have been reading, looking at the wrong area on the thing. Cards on the table. I was, but unintentionally, because I actually copied the wrong name and was looking at Lexiovasaurus, which looks even more so like just Kentrosaurus. <laughs> but um, Loricatosaurus does also look very much like Kentrosaurus. But Lexiovasaurus, wow, that that's Kentrosaurus, but in Asia. Lexovasaurus. Lexovasaurus is known. From, I thought Lexovasaurus was European. It is. It is. Oh, it's from Britain, and so some of the, so the British stuff was what the British material of Lexovasaurus became Loricatosaurus. Oh, they're the same. They're- I don't think they are. No. Okay. Wait. I'm reading through. This is the problem with Stegosaur taxonomy. It's it's sometimes even know worse. It. Well, yes, yeah, that none of us know it. Okay, so Susie Maidman and her colleagues concluded that the holotype of Lexovasaurus was not diagnostic, so they split a specimen off, um, and the French material. So they split off BM and HR thirty one sixty seven, which was found in Britain, and they included the French material, and they made that Loricatosaurus. And then they made Lexovasaurus and Omen Dubium. Other workers have continued to use Lexovasaurus um, for English material from Leeds, apparently on the basis of shared provenance. Hmm. Hmm. So there's not a lot of it known. I think, so Scott, I hate to say this, but the similarity to Kentrosaurus you're noticing may be because most of the mount is based on Kentrosaurus. That you, yeah. Which... I think this is a good moment to remind everybody that if your favorite dinosaur is one that's known from nearly no material, that's not really what your favorite dinosaur is. <laughs> <laughs> this is what was the Path of Titans thing again? It, what the thing that's Carno but not Pycnonomosaurus? Um, Pycnomiosaurus, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which right, it's Carnotaurus. Pycnomiosaurus is real pick me energy. Well, I mean, I can, I can call out people people by name. Alex, not you, Alex, one of our one of our viewers and one of my friends. Your obsession with Spinosaur Tooth, tooth Taxon will be your downfall. You can't which, keep doing this. Which Spinosaur Tooth Taxon is this? Oh, no, he he's um, Asphalt Venator. Uh, he, he really like like if he if you look up anything like like um, Oh, what is Ostafrikasaurus or like any of these other like oh, Spinosaur right. Tooth Taxon? He's done all of the Wikipedia illustrations of them, and it's very funny. And it's kind of a bit that's just gone on for a while. He's also done most of the Spinosaur life reconstructions on Wikipedia, and they're all fantastic. And I very frequently use them in our videos. Cool. If you, this is good stuff. But yeah, they are tooth taxa. Now, you know what I respect in a way? What? That director Colin Trevorrow. Apparently, his favorite dinosaur is Pyroraptor, which, as we've covered in the past, is three bones. But he said, I can will this to be other people's favorites. And he did. He put it in a movie, and now it's probably some people's favorite dinosaur. It was was many people's favorite dinosaur well before Jurassic World because of uh, Dinosaur Planet. Dinosaur Planet oh. was so rad. Okay, my bad. I've I've spoken of I have forgotten to refer to the texts. It's okay, this happens. Well, okay. So um we talked a little bit about the beak. We talked about the shoulder spikes. We talked about how it probably should have more 
elaborate keratin sheaths over not just the plates, but also the spikes. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about fire safety? Uh, Yeah, absolutely. Um, So there's there's what's called a fire pyramid. Fire needs oxygen, fuel and an ignition source. And if you take away one of those things, you can't get a fire anymore. And that, that's been fire safety with Scott. Thank you, Scott. Um, You're welcome. Someone might actually learn something useful in our videos now. <laughs> next next week's episode, we'll talk about how to read fire diamonds. We won't do that. But um, the fuck uh, is a fire diamond? Oh, that the safety cool. thing. F- yeah. Fire diamonds oh. are those safety yeah things where they have the different like like yellow, blue, and white quadrants oh. and stuff on them. I'll be honest, I'm a little disappointed. You know what we're doing? We're doing phylogenum. We're doing phylogenum because we said we were going to do it at the start. I'm gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be dirt, quick and dirty. You do phylogenum. I'm gonna go check on my towels. <laughs> Ste- Kentrosaurus is a stegosaur. Now, viewers, you'll remember that stegosaurs, or maybe you won't. I don't. I don't really care. I. I owe you nothing. Anyway, um, you may recall. <laughs> That stegosaurs are one of the two main groups of thyreophorans. These are the armored quadrupedal dinosaurs uh, that are ornithischians. So, yeah, whatever. Um, stegosaurs, pretty diverse in the Jurassic. Peter out in the Cretaceous. And Kylosaurs, uh, start in the Jurassic, become very diverse in the Cretaceous. Potato, potato. Now, we've talked about Hoyangosaurus on this channel before, which is a very early um, stegosaur. And we've talked about Stegosaurus, which is kind of... If you could get the most derived, it's near there. It's big and beautiful. I mean, it has very uh, plates that aren't a lot, a lot like other stegosaurs. Kentrosaurus, for a time, was considered a basal stegosaur id in that it belonged to the proper family of Stegosauridae. Um, so closer to Stegosaurus than it was to something like Huangosaurus, and even more recently has been found to be even more closely related to Stegosaurus. So this is, it is representative of the late stage of Stegosaur evolution, and that's. That's all she wrote. That's all I got. You know what I like about Kentrosaurus? No, tell me. I like that the plates kind of slowly transition into spikes on the tail. It looks very good. Um, It's a very aesthetically pleasing look that actually is one of the biggest things that I dislike about the the, uh, Camp Cretaceous model is that it makes that deviation or the the difference between the plates and the spikes very stark mm. and i don't yeah because it, it's a whole lot more gradual in kentrosaurus yeah <laughs> you're right jesus christ i went to say Dalton? i went to say yes and i inhaled and fluid just went to... you saw your clothes are still wet <laughs> no actually um, they're drying the drop the towels are dry the clothes never fully dried but Huzzah! Progress. I just threw them around my room to air dry. You see, normally in this game, the Camp Cretaceous designs make me feel in the same way that I feel after the Oracle of Delphi's prophecy comes true. And that I want to gouge out my eyes. Oh. But... <laughs> I was like, where the hell is he going with this? You've been, you've been reading about the Oracle at Delphi a little bit recently, or the f*** did that come from? You watching Percy Jackson? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not watching per- well I watched a little bit over the holidays with my family yeah, I, haven't I know up. what I know you don't lie about enjoying entertainment I don't I'm not lying about enjoying it I just haven't lying kept up with it because I've been busy what did I say that was possibly objectionable other than <laughs> I, I watched the show I said hey that's pretty enjoyable being, and then I haven't watched a few oh, it's so episodes. easy you're being f- with I'm being f***ed with so hard. Anyway, um, for, for our viewers, that was a reference to a classical piece of literature. But they do make yes. me want to gouge out my eyes, because I think the designs in Camp Cretaceous as a show are pretty much uniformly terrible. Um, I just don't like the art style. And you it, were kind of Tarbo, but... Yeah, I was. And, you know, I was mocked for it in our comments section. And in you various Discord servers. <laughs> and I will not make the same mistake again. I ranked Tarbosaurus more highly than I think I should have, mostly as a response to the level of discourse around it being a terrible design, because I don't think that doing that to the design was a bad way to differentiate it from T-Rex. 
Tarbosaurus aside, I raise you Scorpius Rex. Which I like. What is, we're going to talk about that like. later. Yeah, yeah like we're going to talk about that later, but it looks terrible. And Monolophosaurus. Monolophosaurus so like. is, is... I have issues with, but I don't hate. Same. Look, Whatever. and honestly, there, there James, are elements James of the... from, No, James. Um, to, to further James's point and not get it off, you were you were harsher on that than the rest of us were. Yeah, I mean, I just don't like mm-hmm. the Camp Cretaceous art style. I actually think that this model is generally much more aesthetically pleasing than the base game model. I do dislike the fact that it's less accurate. Like it does lose the gradual transition in the plates, which is how we got onto this tangent. And the gradual t- transition in the plates, I think, is a really cool feature of this animal. Mm-hmm. It looks it's really also cool. about like double the size. How do you feel about a Right. You mean with the human well, molars? No, no, the camp, there was the Camp Cretaceous one and there's the base game one. We'll get we'll, to them, right? We'll get to, we'll them. We'll get, we'll get to those because I have just thoughts in general about Aranosaurus, but I, I want to do more research on it before we get into that. That's why we're going to have it as a separate episode. That's why, not because it's a and, different and, and, dinosaur. And, and, yeah. <laughs> Everyone is on their best behavior tonight. <laughs> I'm a stinker. All right. Um, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> oh, Does anybody... the guru formation. It's... Oh, well, I, I wanted to say at least one last thing about, like, Kentrosaurus itself, just because it's something that seems to be brought up relatively frequently as, like, a... Um, just a behavioral thing that it might have done. It has been pointed out that Kentrosaurus has an ex- uh, like a very long tail and apparently a very rearward position center of gravity. And that has been um, hypothesized as an adaptation to help them rear up or feed bipedally sometimes. Um, and possibly... As Bakker suggested, use the tail as its third leg. Sure. And uh-huh. apparently, uh, like th- that, that's been referenced a couple times, and it, it does seem to actually not necessarily be able to be as supportive as that. But like, it is kind of weird that it does. It, it, it at least in a couple things I've seen has referenced that the center of gravity is farther back. That like. I don't know. I, I don't know why it would be. I, it it might just mean nothing. This might be a shaggy dog story, but I I think it is. I, I th- okay. <laughs> Sorry. No. All right. I, no. No. This is. Hey, this future is something, Scott, cut the whole thing. No. 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 Don't cut the whole thing. Don't cut the whole thing because this is something that happens occasionally. It's a paleo um, meme. I, no. No. I don't even mean it's a paleo meme. Like a lot of these quadrupedal dinosaurs do actually have remarkably rear- rearward centers of gravity. Um, this is something I know Scott Hartman had a blog post on a long time ago, but apatosaurians or maybe diplodocoids in general, the center of gravity is like a general. Yeah. It's almost over the hind limbs, yeah. right? So like, you know, he was saying, yeah, it does look like they could have stood up and like, it wouldn't have even been necessarily that hard for them. Like, you know, the center of gravity is pretty far back. He, he, Scott Hartman said they could God almost damn. walk bipedally if that would have been biomechanically possible. Um, That's been proposed for the babies, right? Of stegosaurs? Of diplodocids. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it was also... I, I've, this is No, I'm sorry. You've just triggered a core memory. I oh, am no. so sorry oh. that the video's runtime is about to get longer, but <laughs> did, speaking of Disney's dinosaur, I had a computer game that was Disney's dinosaur adjacent. I mean, it was licensed property as a child. I had one and, of these too. I wonder and if it, it had one. some sort of like one of the features was a little fact file thing. And when it talked about the ankylosaur, it specifically mentioned that juvenile ankylosaurs were bipedal and only became uh, quadrupeds when they reached adulthood. Oh. To which I, I remember as a child, I did what any child would do. And I immediately called my mom over and I was like, mom, is this right? And she was just like, that doesn't sound right. My mother, to be clear, is not a paleontologist. I just trusted her a lot. I still do. She's a very smart As we woman. all should. Yeah, I mean, I, I like my mom a lot and I trust her. She's remarkably intelligent. But I have been looking for this piece of information for like years just to know where this idea even came from. Like, how did that weird niche bipedal ankylosaur thing? That's interesting. 
even appear in this like popular t- movie tie-in computer game for kids. It's weird. I find it weird. That's okay. it. I'm sorry. That was the. Oh, I was Wait. about to say. I'm like, is there a conclusion to this? <laughs> no, I don't know where. It's, I don't know what it's based on. I don't um, think it's correct. Hey, everybody who watches this, uh, you have a mission. Should you choose to accept it? Yeah, I'm sure within an hour of the video going up, they're gonna have like exact links to the paper. Good. That's good for engagement. <laughs> it is. Comments. Like. Subscribe. Subscribe. Do all the things. <laughs> they have at the um, at the Morrison Natural History Museum a couple of different tracks. Uh, one of a baby stegosaurus and one of a, like what looks to be juvenile sauropods of some kind. And I think the juvenile sauropod ones might support the babies, like every once in a while, kind of popping a wheelie and, and being <laughs> on their back legs and they're moving quick. And they have a model of a baby stegosaurus um, not walking because I think the baby stegosaur tracks are pretty uh, predominantly quadrupedal. Like that's not not a question um, to the best of my knowledge. But they do have a little statue of one like standing up and looking around. It's adorable. It's super cute. That sounds adorable. And that's they're really good, good statues too. Like they're really high quality paleo art pieces. Yeah, that place kicks ass. It's a great museum. Go see it, viewers. Support your local museums if you're local to the area. Indeed. Now, just to briefly go back to Scott's point, because I don't want to abort it entirely. Um, I think it's very likely that a lot of these animals were rearing up periodically to like reach into higher branches. It, this is complete like hand waving. But the the fact that we're generally recognizing stegosaurs had longer necks than we thought does kind of remind me of like Garinoc antelope. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like they've got that really long, like gracile neck thing. I don't know. Could they have habitually been like, hey, let me just try to reach for that rear up? I don't know. I think it's possible. Cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's generally like we don't have to make even like special pleas to like, could this animal do it? Like if, if there's not a like very strong biomechanical reason why we think it couldn't, then I think oftentimes an animal could probably at least occasionally assume a posture that you might not otherwise think. It's like modern animals like contort and fold themselves in strange ways all the time. Although I have, I have a, I have a little fun anecdotal story that I can share before we take this thing to its inevitable destination after this, I think of the species viewer, because it sounds like we're running out of things to say Um, that I have heard stories before of park rangers being able to distinguish, uh, elephants in their herd that came from circuses or captivity or something like that, because they're the only ones that rear up on their hind legs huh? to reach higher things. That's interesting. Uh, and wild ones generally just don't. Um, hmm. But yeah, that's just a little, just like fun fact that I heard once. And uh, because I said a fact about a, a, a Jesus, they're making a ruckus. Um, because I said a fact about a modern animal that might be wrong. We might get some comments on that from some of our very good friends that I very much appreciate. Dalton, you've made us attend a guru formation here because oh. this is the only actual, well, I guess the only named dinosaur from Tendaguru in the game. Yes. So I have made a Tendaguru formation. And uh, astute viewers may note that it's very similar to our Morris information. And that's intentional. I used that one and then I modified it. Uh, because they're oh? uh, roughly the same age. They're both late Jurassic formations. Not surprising, considering they have very similar dinosaur faunas. They've got Stegosaurus, Kentrosaurus, obviously in Tendaguru, Stegosaurus, and Hesperosaurus, and the Morrison. Uh, they both have uh, sauropods. This is a Jurassic Park 3 Brachiosaurus, which is a stand-in for Giraffe Titan here. Um, astute viewers may be like, well, shouldn't you use the Jurassic Park 1 one? Because, you know, the skull of that is the giraffe titan skull and that was all based off of giraffe titan mostly and that's a, a correct choice uh, we decided to use the, the jp3 brachiosaurus just because the name brand recognition of the jurassic park one is so associated to brachiosaurus that i wanted something different uh we've got dryosaurus mm-hmm. running around here you might have seen that's a, a stand in for disaltosaurus which is a a dryosaur from the tendaguru um the tendaguru is a late jurassic it is climactically not entirely dissimilar from the Morrison formation, but it is at a different place in the world. 
obviously it's in uh, Tanzania instead of the middle of North America. Um, and notably, uh, whereas the Morris information is uh, thought to be kind of fluvial, floodplains, intermittent, seasonal, wet, dry kind of thing, uh, the Tendaguru formation has got more marine beds in it. Um, and there's kind of an interfingering of some marine layers with some terrestrial layers. And uh, this in particular is supposed to represent the middle dinosaur bed of the Tendaguru. The Tendaguru is subdivided into a lot of different units, which is something I learned for this video. Um, and Kentrosaurus is known from the middle and upper um, and I think a couple others. Um, but Kentrosaurus, Desaltosaurus, and Brachiosaurus have all been found in the middle, or Giraffotitan, excuse me, have all been found in the middle dinosaur bed, which is interpreted as a tidal flat. Um, and so I've done our best to, like, we've got an ocean here, and you can't connect to it because of the way that the, the game works. Um, but, you know, we've got some coastal, like, tidal flats, some pools, um, some nearshore lakes. That's all... Wait. What, Alex? This isn't a braided river system? It's not a braided river system, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> I, could, oh I can't believe it. It is, it is it's interpreted as a tidal flat. Um, at least the middle dinosaur member is. Um, and so that's what we've tried to depict here. Uh, the plants, it, you can ignore them pretty much because it's supposed to be mostly a conifer-dominated thing, but you can't place those in this map easily without doing an individual tree, and I just can't click a thousand trees into, be, into being. I, I simply will not. Are there allosaur like what are the theropods from the Tendaguru like? Um, there is. I know there's one special friend. There's the Elaphosaurus is from there, yeah, right? Yeah, Elaphosaurus is from the Tendaguru. Um, I, I remember hearing rumors of Allosaurus from there, like as a child. It was always included in the list of fauna from there, there and I don't is, think yeah. that's right. There's a referred um, <clears throat> specimen that has was at one point, I believe, named Allosaurus tendaguruensis or tendaguruensis. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tibia, I think. Um, and I think now it's just kind of like, it's a tetanurin. Um, we're not sure. There's also some stuff that's been referred to tentatively ceratosaurus. Um, okay. there's other ceratosaurids. There's possibly torvosaurus or some kind of megasaur. There's Ostafricosaurus yeah, that we mentioned earlier. <laughs> there's Ostafricosaurus. It's a ceratosaur or spinosaur question mark. Um, it, 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 I've heard, I've heard it also said that it might be a croc. <laughs> It can be, it's, it's whatever you want it yeah. to be. <laughs> I think Elaphosaurus is like the best known, uh, well, that's yeah. from, from Tendaguru. It's got a, and, it's got a decent post crania. Yeah. And like nothing else in terms of theropods has gotten much more than like teeth and like a chunk. It, it, all of the theropods were hiding in the chem chem. <laughs> the, well, no, I mean, but it makes sense. It's like a shared fauna, right? You have stegosaur, stegosaur, Elaphosaur, Elaphosaur, mm -hmm. and you know, the Morrison Elaphrosaur Silurus for <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Joke. I know. Um, I don't. <laughs> but they've also got, like, you've got Giraffe Titan, you've got uh, Dicreosaurus, the, the name-bearing Dicreosaurus from the Tendaguru. Uh, something that I've just learned right now is that the, the specimen that's often referred to as the Archbishop uh, sauropod is a, is a Brachiosaur distinct from Giraffe Titan from the Tendaguru. Oh, cool. Yes. Um, That's a fun specimen name. I always, it is. It's so cool. And there is, according to Wikipedia, an unconfirmed uh, osteoderm of a potential paramasilodid squamate, which is consistent with what we find in uh, North America. Let's and go. Europe. But I bet that... Ganyophilids? I'm, I'm very curious to see what the squamate fauna of the Tendaguru actually is. Um, I'd love to know. Are there any goniophilus? What's the croc sitch? Uh, huh? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. It's they're not listed on Wikipedia, so I can't help you out. Trash. No, sorry. Um, there's something referred to Bernisartia. Okay. Interesting. Sus. But I would have to look into it more. Well, neat. I think it's time to give this friend a, a rank these friends and, and for us to go to bed because <laughs> we've been behaving very poorly <laughs> it's like freaking seinfeld episode that's it it's a wrap what's the, what's the deal, deal? With this is like, i'm going to the species view. i don't know i don't hate it um I hate it a lot more now knowing about the, the lips and the horrible uh, 
patchwork painting that happens up there. But overall, it's not terrible. Um, but it'll never be the Zoo Tycoon Kentrosaurus. I'll give this one a C for Kentrosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia, when you said that, I was thinking of that um, TikTok sound that goes, th- 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 goes around every once in a while of, like, my pronouns are he, but not him, because I'll never be him. <laughs> and then just the, ch- 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 the zoo tycoon Kentrosaurus on screen. That's, I mean, he, he will never be him. He'll never be him. No. As me. To make a, a timely media reference... Bear with me. I already uh, already. Stegosaurus is everything. But this is just Kentrosaurus. I was waiting for one of us to make an I'm just Kentrosaurus. Yes, okay. there we go. That was incredibly forced. Um, yeah, but that's okay because it's funny. That's okay because it's a joke to Skeleton Crew video. <laughs> 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 uh, it's fine. Scott, can you remind me what we have in B tier right now? I now don't have the info tab about the recording. You don't get to know that. That's neat. I'm I'm at zero. Likewise. Ninety nine. Yep. All right. 90, don't worry. I got 99. the intro. I got the intro. OK, Are you ready? Well, I... go ahead. Sure. Alex. Welcome back. We're the Skeleton Crew. We had some technical difficulties, but we're coming to you live and with as many Best Actress nominations and wins as Barbie. Zero. Timely joke. This was funny when we were talking about Ken before, and I've been sitting on it for like <laughs> 10 minutes. And now it let it really land. So, Can James, to, uh, one more time from the top. B tier, we have Nothosaurus, Maridactylus, Triceratops, uh, Struthiomimus, Monolophosaurus, a cat. Um, <laughs> no, so he's in H tier. He's in H tier. That that's he had adorable. To he was um, arriving. Sorry. Indoraptor, Dilophosaurus, um, Pachyrhinosaurus, the JP3 Brachiosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and the Dominion. Um, Dreadnought us. And what's in C tier? Oh my god. <laughs> C tier's shorter. <laughs> Hoyangosaurus, Diplodocus, um, Jurassic World slash base game, Velociraptor, uh, Carcharodontosaurus, Apatosaurus, um, Omegalosaurus, uh, Crichtonsaurus, and Jurassic World Stego. Mm. This is C tier. Yeah, that's what it is. Fair. I. Mm, so this is going to be me leaning on. We say several times that a model's accuracy it is not necessarily reflective of its position on the tiers. Um, and this is going to be emblematic of that because I find it boring and uninspiring in the game and I frequently don't use it in my parks because well there's also nothing else from the Tendaguru formation and I like to make mixed exhibits but oh god I'm tied between a C and a B um I'll give it a B I'll give it a B I, I, I don't think it it's quite as bad as some of the things in C tier Okay. Even though this model is, again, like very skeletally accurate to the mount, it's just, it's dull. Am I next? You're or next is... yeah. yeah, you're next. Okay. I. We're talking about the base game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one, the one that's on screen. This is an aid for me, and allow me to explain. Kentrosaurus is a very, well, it was an Operation Genesis. It's probably some nostalgia for me because I like making it in that game. But Kentrosaurus is a dinosaur dinosaur to me. It's a big thing covered in spikes and weird bits. And it looks like something 
that should exist only in like a in a in a night illustration. And so I'm predisposed to liking it. Despite the Stegosaur jokes from before, I do like it. And I think this this says to me this is Kentrosaurus. And I like the orange and I, I kind of like some of the more boring like deserty colors because I'd always make kind of a deserty enclosure for it. And I'm going to err on the side of I kind of like it, and I say it's an A. I'm a bit torn on it. I was kind of torn between A and B myself because I, I do think this evokes Kentrosaurus very well. It is, like Scott said, it's very accurate to the Skeletal Mountain Berlin. Um, it, it does the plate to spike transition very well. Proportions are pretty good. It's got a decently long neck. It's got a really long tail. The colors are bland and dull, and I don't love that. And it's small, so I don't often use it in the game, but not that's not against it because it is a pretty correctly sized in terms of the actual animal. And its head doesn't look horrible unless you zoom in and then it looks like the worst thing I've ever seen. Like, I don't, I wish I had never zoomed into the head because if I hadn't, this would be getting an A, I think. Um, the weird lips, the, the strange texturing, that combined with the dull colors, I think puts this out of A and into B for me, but I'm, I'm happy with it in B. All right. So with, I guess it's, Two C's, two B's, and an A. Seems like B town to me. Seems yeah. like B B town to me. Bean towns coming to Boston. Oh God, poor thing. Yes. So let's head on to the I other guy. Out on this model that I've just noticed is that it, for some reason this one's like size large for the color. It's wearing a lar- a size large color. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I think that that was. Um, I think that that's a holdover from back when. Um, Back before mm. the more recent edition that actually made it so you could have two I think you're models. Um, because it <laughs> used to be that this was one of the first ones that picking a certain skin would change the size. Mm. It, it was this in uh, Aronosaurus. Because right. it, it changed Aronosaurus to size small. Um, ooh, ooh, that dark color is gorgeous. Go, I just... I'll make it yeah. walk. Dance, monkey. All right, so we got our, our second Kentrosaurus, Kentrobigus. So this one, I <clears throat> I personally like a lot more, um, just because aesthetically, I think it looks better, um, even though it's less accurate. Like to add on to the fact that we don't care about accuracy as much here, like at least it's inaccurate in a way that doesn't look bad. Um, I really like the patterns on the the plates and and the spikes, and these darker colors are just like fantastic um if the other model had these colors i would like it more um and if the other model didn't have the horrible like sock puppet face i might like it more um i will give it oh man i'm torn between b and a because i don't like it that much okay i don't like it that much i'll give it a b Ventrosaurus. <laughs> if, if student uh, viewers, if you've ever gotten a B in class, it's because your teacher doesn't like you that much. <laughs> Personally, this is a B tier design. I will not elaborate. That's Good. it. It's B. I was just absolutely struck by the fact that this thing looks kind of shockingly like the Ark Kentrosaurus. Um, but that, that's kind of beside the point. Um, I'm also putting this thing in B, uh, with the other model, uh, because it really does seem like, just like Amelia said of like, I think it is aesthetically prettier, even if it is less accurate. And the thing that really gets me, if the, if these two were the same size, I'd give this, I'd give this an A and I would have this be my preferred one the fact that it's like two to three times bigger like really really throws me and i really dislike that but everything else about it i like a little bit more um minus the inaccuracies but like yeah aesthetically b b it's a it's b excellent um there are pros and cons to this for me pros i do like the color on the on on the interior plates 
uh, cons. It's big. It's way too big. It doesn't. It doesn't speak Kentrosaurus to me. Um, now, if they discover a, l- a large stegosaur from the Tendaguru that looks like this, well, we're in luck. Um, but I cannot, in good conscience, put it with my good vibes guy. This is a slightly worse vibes guy, but not a bad vibes guy. So we're saying B. Um, similar. I have similar feelings to Alex on this. Um, there are aspects of this I like more than the, the base Kentrosaurus. The colors both on the plates and the body, I think are better. Um, and I like the plates. I like how I like the elaboration of the plates, although I think that the, the transition from plate to spike is better in the base. I yeah. don't, it's, it's weird in that up close, I like this one's head more. And from far away, I like the other one's head more because mm-hmm. close up. That one is a gross, has gross, weird lips, but from far away, they look like a beak. This one close up. It looks like a beak. And from far away, it looks like it has black lipstick on um, because it's just this tiny little like I the next two short in this, which bugs me. This one, but to, just to me, like reads as if you took the Lost World Stegosaurus, a model that I like, and just swapped out the place for Kentrosaurus place, yeah. which I think is yeah. lazy and I don't like. Um, it doesn't read to me as Kentrosaurus. It reads as it, it's not just like a size thing. It's like a proportions thing. I always think of Kentrosaurus as kind of being like long. And this is like tall yeah. in the way that I think of Stegosaurus. Um, so I'm giving this a C because I, I like it less than uh, the base game. But it's not horrible. Well, looks. Well, looks like that one's going in C in yeah. B as well. I'm happy that that happened um, because like when I thought we were going to rank them together, like that's I'd already kind of decided for me, at least that they both kind of average out to a B. Like it's beautiful. It all worked out then. Yeah. I, I will also say in the time that I'm throwing these up here, uh, I forgot to say it during the actual um, ranking portion, but I, I, I think I would knock an entire letter point off. Well, from like an A uh, for Kentrosaurus, just because of how bad it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, I don't so, hate it. it's so bad. So They're all bad right. sounds, but I like them. Both Kentros it's end like up Scott. in B. <laughs> but for different reasons. Bad sounds, but I like it. Like, ska. <laughs> I can't uh, yeah, to like I, ska. As hard as I tried once. <laughs> I'm okay with ska. Yeah, it's I don't catchy. hate it. Yeah. It takes advantage of, like, the innate humanness to, like, jive to a good rhythm, because it does have good rhythms. It does. And that makes me hate it more, because, like, I know, like, academically, You're being I, know I, I know I don't like it, but, like, the, the like, lizard part of my brain is like, <laughs> What a, what a stunning, right. a stunning so that, praise for a musical genre. It's like, it sounds good if it tricks the lizard brain into thinking there's rhythm there. <laughs> it is time to spin that, that, that wheel. 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 Round and round and round it goes. Where will it land? Nobody. No, something no, good. no, 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 no. Oh, no. man. Oh. Oh. Hey. Controversial. Ontogeny time. We're keeping the spiky theme going. Yeah. Ontogeny. <laughs> okay. Ontogeny. So we're not doing no, this we're not doing another. We can't do another video tonight. This has been the least like coherent recording session we've ever had. <laughs> this was. I mean, it was a lot of fun. It really is. Scott's really got his work cut out for him. Said <laughs> it. Yeah. This, no, normally the rule is that it's like two to three times the run t- like the raw footage length that it takes to edit i think that this one's gonna be four yeah that's very possible hey uh, we can't help being so we're fun. very fun um anyway so next week we're gonna talk about sticky moloch which is a small pachycephalosaur that may or may not exist but it exists in our hearts and a good name it's got a good name Great. what a good um, name it's real i'm i'm just gonna spoil it for my opinion right now i i also think it's real but we'll <laughs> talk about that in the video do you want to see why we think this Come, come watch, watch the next video. video. Don't, come, to make sure you check see that, it, Don't touch that dial. Subscribe that dial. to the Skeleton Crew. <laughs> don't touch that dial is what you say when you're a TV network in the 50s. We say like and subscribe. That's what we need you to do. Please do it for us. And smash if everyone that bell. who likes this video likes and subscribes, we will get some new subscribers. And that would be very nice. We'll also get a lot of likes. Um, just just saying just saying thank you for watching this episode um now scrolling on screen right now are going to be the names of all of our patrons listed in the credits 
Um, but we're going to give a special spoken shout out to our most generous patrons who support us at Gorgosaurus tier and higher. And as of this recording, these patrons are Benjamin Seepser, Nickname3110, Philip Fico, AK92, Christopher Bellis Jones, Adam Olos, Dan O'Kyrus, King Zashu, Lax Fission, Max Ironpaw, Original Username, Pythonic, and Wheat. 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 Thank Wheat. you guys. Oh, you know, eventually we're going to get somebody with a Y or a Z patron name, and it's going to ruin the ending cadence on Wheat that we've gotten so used to. <laughs> we're just going to keep yeah. saying Wheat. And Wheat. And Wheat. And Wheat. Wheat. And Wheat. Anyway. Thank you all so much. Your support of the Skeleton Crew means a lot to us and really helps us, um, you know, find the time we need to find to make these videos and make them good for you. Uh, you know, we can't express our, our thanks for your support enough. If you are watching our channel a lot and you like our videos, please consider supporting us on Patreon if you can, because it is the most direct way to uh, contribute to our efforts as a channel. But we appreciate your viewership. Leave a like, leave a comment, do all the things the YouTubers tell you to do because they do actually help us find more uh, viewers for our videos and help spread the good word of paleontology far and wide. I am a, yeah. a, a, a completely exhausted and my brain has turned to cottage cheese within my skull. And so with that, uh, with this rambling excuse for a closeout to the video, I am going to declare it over and click the stop recording button. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye. Y'all keep talking. I'm just going to let this float on this bad boy. I got to go check on my clothes because God right. hates me. <laughs> That's not true, viewer. God hates no one. He's apathetic to all of our plight. <laughs> now. <laughs>